Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages, present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are climbing a steep mountain on the planet Venus in pursuit of a criminal. We're running straight, all right, Commander. See? Here's where he dug a foothold. Watch your step, Happy. It's a 2,000-foot drop if you slip. I think I'd better rest a minute, sir. I'm getting dizzy. Everything's getting dark. I notice the same thing, but it's not dizziness. My head's perfectly clear. Hey, look at the sun. I can hardly see it. It must be an eclipse. Venus doesn't have a moon. There can't be an eclipse. Smoke of rockets. It's pitch dark. This is Vogan's work. It's got the blackout beam on us. If we try to move another inch in this darkness, we'll drop into the chasm. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Serpent of Saturn. Here he comes, gang. Here he comes. The fastest boy on roller skates in the neighborhood. Get up and go, and look at him go. Wow! Now, there's a space patroller who really has it. He just got up from a good nourishing breakfast. Just finished off a big bowl of rice checks with plenty of milk and sugar. He's packed full of action energy. The kind of action energy that'll help to make you a whizzer on rollers. And help make you so alert that you can come up with the right answers in your classroom. Yes, sir, space patrollers, you start off any day ready for action when you eat a whopping good breakfast with rice checks. Because Rice Chex is tops for get up and go. Tops for taste, too. A delicious triple toasted shredded rice treat that's good with milk or cream and super good with fruit. And tops for size because it's bite size. The just right size for easy eating. So, gang, try Rice Chex yourself. And try Wheat Chex, that wonderful, wonderful whole wheat cereal. Rich in energy, swell tasting, and bite size. So don't forget Chex, rice, or wheat. It's tops three ways. For taste, for size, for get up and go. Look for them in the red and white checkerboard packages with the picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the front and the neat free Space Patrol trading card inside. Rice Chex, wheat Chex. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Serpent of Saturn. Ordinarily, the appearance of the monthly Space Patrol bulletin is a routine event. It causes no excitement, except perhaps among the officers and men of the publication section who are charged with the responsibility of preparing this official monthly report on Space Patrol activities. But this time, there is considerable interest in the document by every level of command. In his central office at Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, Commander Corey frowns and shakes his head as he examines a copy of the bulletin. Cadet Happy, returning from an errand in another part of headquarters, fails to notice the commander's unusually serious manner. Gee, Commander, everybody's sure studious all of a sudden. All over headquarters, people are reading the bulletin, even the file clerks. I guess the editor's added a page of jokes. <laughs> There's certainly nothing funny in this issue of the bulletin, Happy. Oh, sorry, sir. Especially in the Secretary General's notes in the margin of this copy. Something wrong? Plenty. Those robberies, is that it? Partly, but it's more than that. Do you realize that in the past ten days, there have been 23 cases of assaults against space patrollers? And all apparently without reason. Well, I heard about a couple of them, sir. One on Venus and another one on Pluto. Well, if we hadn't been so busy on Neptune in the past week, I'd have alerted our men to take special precautions. Now, take a look at this breakdown here in the bulletin. Hmm. All over the solar system. Lowell City, Jupiter City, the Lunar Fleet. And days. in every case, our men were the victims of unprovoked assaults. Jumped from ambush, beaten. But why? Well, I think it's part of a carefully organized attempt to demoralize the space patrol. You mean some sort of a gang is behind it, Commander? Yes. Looking at each incident individually, one might think that a group of hoodlums just decided to gang up on a space patroller. Uh-huh. When you put them all together, a rather interesting coincidence shows up. You notice whenever a beating occurred, a robbery followed within a day or two in the same locality. Oh, then you think the gang behind the robberies is also behind the beatings. That's yeah, about the size of it, Happy. Apparently, the plan is this, to try to get our agents concerned about their own personal safety and reduce their efficiency. Well, if it keeps on like this, it might work. Mm, we're not going to let it. This gang has succeeded so far because it's well organized and evidently has spies in high places. What's the plan, sir? Well, the last attack on space patrollers occurred in Jupiter City at the spaceport, right? 
Well, yes, sir. Those two off-duty pilots. Oh, you mean if they follow the pattern, the gang may be planning a robbery at Jupiter City. Exactly. And the only thing we can do now is to alert our men in Jupiter City. Major Robertson to Commander Corey. Well, Robbie's calling, sir. Yes, Robbie? Hey, Commander, we've got another one. A robbery? Yeah, and it's really serious. A model of the blackout beam has disappeared right out of the Jupiter City lab. Jupiter City? Hey, Commander, you sure called that one. Yes, but too late. Robbie, blast off for Jupiter City immediately. Yes, sir. Make a thorough check of security measures. I want a brainograph test made of everyone at the Jupiter City lab. Space phone a complete report to me. Meantime, in one of the finest buildings in Saturn City, capital of the ringed planet... A huge, broad-shouldered man sits behind a desk in a large but simply furnished office. Coiled on the desk, in a lifelike pose, is a startling example of the taxidermist art, a hooded cobra. The large man presses a button, and a moment later, a door opens and Thad Bogan swaggers in. Yes, Mr. Gargoth? Bogan, the Venus Express will blast off in half an hour. You will be aboard. Yes, sir. When you arrive in Venus City, you will charter an atmosphere ship and go to our hideout at the base of Mount Janik. You will pose as a botanist collecting samples. I understand the Venus wildflowers are quite beautiful this time of year. <laughs> you can admire the flowers while you wait for Preston. What's my business with Preston, Mr. Gargoth? You will give him an instrument which you will find in the emergency tool locker of the atmosphere ship. The light neutralizer. Oh, you've got the blackout beam. Of course. Right out of the Jupiter City Space Patrol Laboratory. I'll bet Corey's <laughs> tearing his hair. Unfortunately for our cause, Corey is given to more direct and effective action. However, I think we can divert Corey's attention. I'll rough up some more of his men. This time I'll rough up Corey himself. Mm, that's taken on quite a job, isn't it, Mr. Gargoth? It's time we struck at Corey before he strikes at me. Yes, but how? It's very simple. Corey will be informed that the Cobra will rob automatic factory R-18 outside of Saturn City. But, Mr. Garga, the Space Patrol doesn't even know your organization exists. Why tip him off? We can't hope to keep our operations a secret indefinitely. Corey must have figured out by now that these robberies have been masterminded by one organization. Yes, but to use our secret name. Why do you think I selected Cobra as my insignia? Well, uh, You I... think I'm just being melodramatic, don't you? I selected the cobra as an emblem because of its psychological effect. To the average person, the cobra suggests something silent, ominous, and deadly. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yes, Mr. Gargoth. Fear is a useful weapon. Before long, we will have the inhabitants of all ten planets shuddering at the mention of the cobra. <laughs> Even the space patrol. But how does that take care of Corey? You think Corey would miss a chance to capture the leader of a gang that has pulled off more than 20 daring and successful robberies? Oh, I don't suppose he would. That's why I'm going to lure him to factory R-18. Just how are you going to do that? There's a civilian clerk named Walter Reiner at Corey's headquarters on Terra. Oh, yes, he gave us some information well, once. Reiner isn't much use to us, too undependable. But I'm going to plant some information on Reiner and have Corey tipped off. Corey will think he's uncovered a plot <laughs> and fly right into our trap. Sometime later at Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, Appy enters the commander's office with an extremely nervous young man, Walter Reiner. This is Reiner, sir. Oh, thanks, Happy. Sit down, Reiner. Yes, Commander. Thank you. I'll tell you why I brought you here. I've received two anonymous tips that you have some information about a robbery. A robbery? No, sir, that's not true. And somebody seems quite determined to get you into trouble. Can you think of anyone who would have reason to do this to you? Why, no, sir. Uh, believe me, if I knew anything about a robbery, I'd report it at once. According to these two informants, you're supposed to be carrying written information on you right now. Information that you're to pass on to someone else. But that's not true, Commander. You can search me if you want. Uh, here, I'll empty my pockets. You can examine everything. Here's my identification folder. You can look through that. There is nothing in it but... Something wrong? It's a slip of paper. But I don't know how it got there. Yeah, let me see it. Plan 4 is now in effect. A Cobra will personally supervise a theft of radioactive strontium from automatic factory R-18, north of Saturn City, at 1800 hours universal star time. Smoking rockets? I don't know anything about it. Honestly, Commander, 
I know it looks bad, but I swear I don't know anything about this it. This cobra that's mentioned here, does that mean anything to you? No, sir, not a thing. It's a horrible trick. All right, Reiner, all it's right. It's somebody's idea of a joke. I said it's all right, Reiner. You mean, you mean you believe me? Somebody was very anxious for me to find this on you. Just go back to your work and don't say anything to anybody about it, understand? Yes, sir. Thank you, Commander. Thank you very much. Well, somebody sure must have it in for Reiner to play a trick like that. What Reiner watched, Happy. I'll assign a man to trail him and contact Saturn Space Patrol. I'm going to put a heavy guard on Factory R-18. You mean that Reiner isn't on the level and there really is going to be a robbery? I think someone's trying to lure me to the factory. As for Reiner, he may be an innocent dupe. We'll watch him for a while. Commander, he's coming back. Commander. Commander, i got to tell you something. Yes, Reiner, what is it? I didn't tell you the whole truth before. When you let me go... I... I was relieved. Then I got scared. I'm afraid of what they might do to me. What do you mean by they? The gang. The Cobra gang. And you did know about that note? No, sir. Well, who is this Cobra? I don't know. But he's got a powerful organization of criminals. They're behind all of those robberies. And you're a member of the gang? No, 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 not exactly. I just sold him some information a few months ago about some security control procedure. Whom did you deal with? Uh, it was a man named Wogan. Thad Wogan. He's one of the higher-ups. Why are you telling all this now? Because I think they want to get me out of the way. They're afraid I... Double-cross them the way you did the space patrol? I'll make up for it. I know more about the gang than they think I do. I know their secret space upon frequency. All right, Rainer. Start at the beginning and give me the whole story. Even after hours of careful questioning, Commander Corey is able to obtain only a few useful bits of information about the band of criminals. Then, with Reiner in custody, Buzz and Appy begin the tedious task of checking the gang's frequencies. Nothing on this band so far, sir. You suppose Reiner made a mistake in the frequencies? Well, what he told us checks with the brainograph test. Imagine that little rat selling security secrets. I'd sure like to know who's the head of this. Bogan calling Cobra. Cobra. Bogan to Cobra. They've got something. Bogan to Cobra. Cobra here. Go ahead, Bogan. I'm set up at Marjanic. Have you tried the neutralizer? Yeah, it works fine. We can put it to use as the Space Patrol never dreamed of. They've got the light neutralizer. All right. Preston will relieve you of the machine at about 1,700 hours tomorrow. Just sit tight, Cobra out. Mount Jarnik. It's about 300 miles north of Venus City. Let's get to the ship, Happy. Vogan is going to be relieved of that light neutralizer sooner than he thinks. High above the cloud-draped peak of Mount Jarnik, the Terra 5 circles slowly. Then, using repeller ray, begins to descend as Buzz and Happy scan the terrain by sensitive viewscopes. In a small building at the base of the mountain, Thad Vogan clicks on a spacephone. Cobra calling Vogan. Come in, Vogan. Vogan here, go ahead. Something's gone wrong. Don't wait for Preston. Take the light neutralizer and get out of there. What's the matter? Corey didn't fall for that robbery. He's arrested Reiner, and the little sap knows more about our organization than you thought he did. He doesn't know a thing about it. Nothing that could hurt us anyway. Look, Vogan, do what I tell you. Get the neutralizer and get out of there. I'll contact you later. Cobra out. Now, listen, boss. Now, what's he getting all excited about? Everything was just fine and... Who could that be? Now, this paralyzer ray will take care of the situation. All right, drop that gun. Sure, Space Patroller. Like this. Get him, Hap. Yes. <laughs> now, while you're both relaxed, enjoying the effects of my paralyzer ray, I'm going to make sure I won't be bothered by you again. This building is quite flimsily constructed. Have you noticed? <laughs> A few touches with this Atomo torch, and this room will be a roaring inferno. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles reporting on a plane that can fly a thousand miles without refueling, the North American FJ-2 Fury. In a moment, we'll hear from the well-known test pilot on this Navy jet plane, J. Ray Donahue, Jr., the Fury is a carrier-based fighter armed with four 20-millimeter cannons. 
It flies 650 miles per hour. Has an altitude mark of 45,000 feet. Its length, 37 feet. Now, J. Ray Donahue, Jr., recorded at Edwards Air Force Base. To fly at supersonic speeds, a test pilot must have plenty of energy. That's why I always get a good night's sleep and start the day off with a good breakfast cereal like rice checks or wheat checks. They have plenty of energy, and they taste mighty fine. And I know that you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puff, or flake contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from J. Ray Donahue, Jr., Bob Love, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. <laughs> And now, back to our space patrol adventure, the Serpent of Saturn. Gargoth, who calls himself the Cobra, has organized a band of criminals that have successfully committed scores of daring robberies. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy traced Gargoth's chief henchman, Thad Bogan, to a hideout at the base of Mount Janik on the planet Venus. When Buzz and Happy entered the small building, Bogan rendered the space patrollers helpless with a paralyzer ray. Then, to prevent pursuit, he set fire to the building... Now, as the flames roar about them, Buzz and Happy struggle against the effects of the paralyzer ray. Commander, I can move a little. Try to stand up, Happy. The heat. This place is like a furnace. If we can't shake the ray effect off in a couple of minutes, we're finished. I can move my arms. I can't stand up. I made it. My legs are numb, but I can walk. Here, give me your hand. There. Lean on me. It's wearing off. I'm going to make it. A few more steps. We'll be outside the building. We made it. Wow. I got a lucky break. The charge in Vogan's ray gun was fairly light. Commander. Look back at the building. We got out just in time. Can you see Vogan anywhere? No, sir. The smoke is too thick. Maybe he couldn't have blasted off yet. Would have hurt his ship. Uh, there he is, headed for his ship. Yeah, I see him now. Hey, what's that he's carrying? Must be the light neutralizer. Oh, my legs weren't so numb we could catch him. Uh-oh, he saw us. I just wish he'd come back here. He acts like he's considering it. Well, uh, he's not going to risk getting within range of our ray guns. I bet he wishes he'd taken them from us. He was so sure his fire trap was going to work. Hey, that's funny. He's not going to his ship after all. He's heading for the mountain. Come on, Happ, let's try to follow him. Uh, yes, sir. Why didn't he go to his ship? We couldn't have stopped him from blasting off. Well, it's an atmosphere job. Logan probably figures we could space a phone for a patrol ship to go after him. Yeah, sure. He's taking a chance on losing us on the mountain. You have your miniature space phone, Hap? Yes, sir. I'll report to Venus City headquarters and keep on after Bogan. With Buzz and Happy doggedly following him, Thad Bogan climbs higher and higher up the steep face of Mount Janik. At first, he outdistances them. But as the minutes go by, the effects of the paralyzer ray wear off, and Buzz and Happy start gaining on Bogan. (sighs) Bogan's sure hanging under that light neutralizer. If you throw it away, he'd be able to climb a lot faster. He won't drop it till he has to. I hope he hangs on to it. After the way we're risking our necks to get it back. I'll say this for Bogan. He climbs like a mountain goat. (laughs) I'll say. Hey, Commander, is that model the only light neutralizer in existence? Yes, this model was to be tested, then if proved successful, a larger model was to be made into a spaceship. Well, does the... Well, does it really black out light completely? It can, but it's designed to reduce the sun's glare on ships making flights on sunward vectors, particularly between the inner planets. It sure would come in handy on construction jobs and space platforms. Uh-huh. Hey, it looks like Vogan's going to take us clear to the top. Make sure he doesn't get directly above us and drop a rock on us. We're still on his trail, sir. See, that's where he took a foothold. Watch your step, Happy. It's a 2,000-foot drop if you slip. I think I'd better rest a minute, sir. It's getting dizzy. Everything's getting dark. I noticed the same thing, but it's not dizziness. My head's perfectly clear. Hey, look at the sun. I can hardly see it. Hey, there must be an eclipse. An eclipse on Venus? Hey, that's right. Venus doesn't have a moon. But there can't be an eclipse. But something's shutting off the sun. It's a heavy fog, maybe. Don't move, Ab. Smoke and rockets, it's pitch dark. Logan's turned the blackout beam on us, the light neutralizer. If we try to move another inch in this darkness, we'll drop into the chasm. Well, isn't he in the same fix we are? Not necessarily. The neutralizer can be adjusted to dim out light all around you, or it can be focused in a beam. If we only had our Atomo lights. They wouldn't work, Happy. The field of the neutralizer cuts out all light waves. What are we going to do? 
We can't go back down. We can't go ahead. And well, Vogan's got us at his mercy. There's one thing. He can't see us. He doesn't have to see us. All he's got to do is wait until we make a false move and we're goners. Wait a minute, Hap. There's a good-sized rock here next to me. I can feel it. I'm going to try to give it a shove down the side of the mountain. When it drops, let out a yell. I get it. Make him think we've fallen. Right. Here goes. Hap, look out! Look out! How was that? Very realistic. For a minute, I was afraid you did fall. Press close to the cliff and keep very still. Hey, it turned off the neutralizer. I can see. We'll probably wait to be sure we're gone. Well, I hope he doesn't come back down here to investigate. Vogan to Cobra. Vogan to Cobra. Listen, he's got a miniature spacer phone. Turn your volume up, Hap. Vogan to Cobra. Cobra here. Where are you? Halfway to the top of Mount Shonic. Corey and his cadet were after me. Corey? They're on Venus? I now told... Take it easy, Mr. Gargan. It's all right. Corey and that cadet won't bother us anymore. I took good care of them. Good. How? I turned on the light neutralizer. They couldn't see in the blackout beam and fell off the ledge. A nice work, Logan. Yeah, but I'm still on the mountain and I don't like it. I'll come and get you. Think I want to wait up here while you come all the way from Saturn? I'm not on Saturn. I'm in a spaceship not very far from Venus. Well, that's better. Get her as soon as you can. Corey may have notified the space patrol before he fell. All right, you get to the top of the peak. Everything looks clear. I'll land and pick you up. Cobra out. Hurry. So the Cobra's name is Gargoth. Vogan thought he was on Saturn. Probably that's the headquarters of the outfit. It's possible. What do we do now? Tip off the Venus City Space Patrol? We'll use our space phone. Vogan might hear it. Sure. We'll take a chance on sneaking up on Vogan. If we capture him before Gargoth gets here, we may be able to trick him into landing. Yeah, and then we'll have the Cobra. Come on, let's go. Stay close to the cliff so he can't see it. Slowly and cautiously, Buzz and Happy resume their climb up the steep mountainside. Occasionally, they get a glimpse of Bogan far above them. Then they press close to the cliff and wait. We've had one good break. Bogan doesn't ever look down. He's probably afraid he'll get dizzy. And the going's not so steep now, sir. We're getting near the top. I'm thankful for this growth of brush at the summit. It'll help us hide from Bogan. I hope we can get him before the cobra shows up. Drop Happy. Hit the dirt. Did he see us? I guess not. He's going on. But he started to look down this way. We'd better wait a few minutes. At last, Vogan reaches the summit of Mount Janik. Wearily, he lays down the light analyzer, then sits on a rock to rest. Silently, Buzz and Happy creep closer. Careful, Happy. Don't let him hear us. There's not much cover from here on. Do we rush him? Let's try to get a few yards closer. If he has a chance to use that blackout beam, we could never find him. Yeah. But, oh, gee. Get the neutralizer, Hap. I'll handle Vogan. Corey! I'll take that gun, Vogan. <coughs> All right, Vogan. Had enough? Yeah. Happy, got the neutralizer? Yes, sir. Hey, Commander. It's a spaceship. It's probably Vogan's pal. Better all get out of sight before he gets close enough to see us. Come on, Vogan. Get over there by that brush. You stand out where you can be seen. We'll be in the brush right behind you. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm coming. Cobra to Vogan. Cobra to Vogan. Answer him, Vogan. But don't try to warn him. Okay. Vogan to Cobra. Go ahead. There aren't any ships in the vicinity. I'm coming in to pick you up. All right. Come ahead. Corey, here. Watch out. Now give me that space phone. Corey, you told me Corey was dead. I was very much alive, Gargoth. Or Cobra, wherever you are. Now make it easy on yourself and land, or I'll have every patrol ship in the Venus sector after you. You'd better talk fast, then, because I'm going to blast you off that mountain with a space torpedo. No. No, boss. Please don't. You've made a stupid blunder, Vogan. But I assure you that the rocket is meant only for Corey. If you get it, well, it's an unfortunate accident. Space torpedoes... We don't stand a chance. We've got to hide. We've got to hide. Happy sure your space phone's turned off. It is, sir. Good. Let's have a look at that light neutralizer. That's not going to save us, not from torpedoes. Oh, see, this setting ought to be about right for our purpose. Now, we'll just set the neutralizer here on the ground. Now, come on. Get out of the field of darkness, quickly. I can't see. Of course you can't, stupid. Just do what the commander tells you. Come on. Hey. 
We're out of the field. He can see us. If you stay in the brush, just get far away from that field of neutralized light. Yeah, we should be safe enough. Commander, you've made a nice target. From here in the ship, the field of darkness looks like a black hole on the top of the mountain. A black round hole. Somewhere inside that hole you were hiding. <laughs> so futile, Commander. <laughs> so pathetically futile. He's making a pass right over us. He fired a torpedo. Smoke and rockets. The field of darkness is gone. And, and when you look at that hole, what a blast. Yeah, there goes a perfectly good light neutralizer blown to bits. Yeah. And also, there goes the cobra. He figures he finished us. Are you sure he's not coming back? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I sure hate to see that crook get away. He'd better enjoy his triumph while he can, Happy. Because we're going after the cobra and we won't give up till we get him. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hi, Space Patrollers. This is Captain Tufel. And Cadet Happy. I'm reporting to you on Rice Checks. And I'm reporting to you on Wheat Checks. Rice Checks. Triple toasted shredded rice biscuits. The taste mighty good. Tops for taste. That's Rice Checks. Wheat Checks. Boy, they've got a swell whole wheat flavor that just can't be beat. Tops for taste. That's Wheat Checks, too. And Rice Checks are made in that modern bite-sized design for easy eating. Tops for size. That's Rice Checks. Wheat Checks are bite-sized for super easy eating. Tops for size, too. And gang, after a good nourishing breakfast with Checks, rice, or wheat, you'll see their tops for get up and go. Real Space Patrol get up and go, like the commander has. Checks, a good word to remember at breakfast time or any time because... They're tops three ways. For taste... Size and get up and go. Look for the red and white checkerboard packages with the picture of the commander or the swell picture of me on the outside. <laughs> yes, and the terrific Space Patrol trading card on the inside. Rice checks. Wheat checks. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are exploring the system of unused water mains under Jupiter City, searching for a hidden laboratory operated by the Cobra Gang. After trudging nearly a mile in a crouched position, Happy moans. Oh, oh, my aching back. I sure wish this pipe was six inches bigger. Now from the chart, the lab should be just a few hundred yards ahead. Commander, there's air blowing through the main. Yes, it's getting stronger every second. This is like being in a wind tunnel. What's causing it? The air's being forced to the main by the water behind it. Water? What water? From the reserve tank. Gargut knows we're down here and he's trying to drown us. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Gems of Jupiter, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Deverett. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.